Hi everyone, my name is Francesca Ferrando. I teach here at NYU, Program of Liberal Studies. And we are talking today about how to write a paper. In this specific video, we are going to talk about our roots, where to locate our own paper in the big and fascinating flow of philosophy, in my case, or whatever other academic field you are in. We have been already addressing other topics in this mini course. Why? Why are we writing? What? What is that we want to share? What is our main argument? Who? Who is our audience? Who is going to be reading us? And here we are going to really ask the question, when? The question when is a good one because it makes us feel that we are not alone. We are part of a much wider discuss discussion that has been happening since the ancient times about who are we. And it's going to go on in the future, it's at the core of our existential uh, inquiry. So in this video, we are going to underline the importance of rooting your argument, whatever is your field, whatever is your argument, you need to show that you are coming from somewhere, that you are not coming from nowhere. This is not Zen poetry, which is an amazing, beautiful field. I love koans. But we're talking today about specifically academic papers and how to make sure that the people reading you understand which one is your genealogy. This is fundamental. Some people, before reading your paper, are only going to read your references to see if the field of, in my case, for instance, philosophy, in our case, philosophy, that they are reading about is what they are being interested in. But you can think of many other examples, for instance, biology, astronomy. They're going to see oh, what, are, what is this person writing about, which one are their references. By your roots, they will understand your topic. They will not know your argument. In your argument, your original voice is going to come out. But ne they need to know to locate your roots. There is no tree without roots, and there is no rhizome with without these connections. So the when is fundamental to a good paper. I would say so fundamental that you need to write in the first paragraph of the introduction, of which we are going to talk in our next uh, video, you need to clarify not only your argument right away in the first paragraph, but also your roots. What are your references? I would say for a short paper, for instance, if you're an undergraduate, you would say you need at least three references. Um, I say three because it's almost like a table. You need at least three uh, three legs of a table for the table not to fall. Three is a good number. You could go higher than that depending of the, of, on the length of your paper. Don't have too many references if it's a short paper and don't to have too little. One is not enough unless you're writing, you know, maybe a you know, very, very short uh, reflection about a, a philosopher or, or a scientist. But you need more than that because it shows that you are a good scholar. And a good scholar is someone who has studied. Now, if you're an undergraduate, keep it simple. Don't go beyond what is, uh, what is asked to you. Uh, if it's a research paper, it's a research paper. If it is not, if you just need to share your insights, your argument, keep it simple. Keep it to three, for instance. For my students who are watching this, three is perfect. So how do you choose your sources and your references? So let's say that eventually for a paper that is around 2,500 to 3,000 words, you would say at least three references, no less than that. And I would say in my case, don't go more than four or five. No more than that. You don't have enough time to really address all of these sources. Your sources are on one side can be a, a philosopher or a scientist or whatever that you really appreciated, that really spoke to you. So bring in their force, validate your argument. So they work, they are on your side. They're there to support you. On the other side, they can also be sources that you do not agree with. For instance, in my uh, course, we talk a lot about post-humanism and transhumanism, and we address the really hot debate about human enhancement. 
should we enhance the human at the biotechnological level? So this is a hot argument and it's highly debated. So some people are really passionately against and some people are passionately for, in favor. So you can also choose a paper or a book of someone who is very much on your opposite side, that really, you know, propose something you absolutely do not agree. And still, you really want them as one of your sources because you are going to be in dialogue, even if it's not a direct person, it's through writing. And this has been done now for thousands of years, writing as a form of dialogue with people who came before us. I can be in dialogue with Plato without Plato being here with me. I can be in a dialogue with uh, uh, Diotima, uh, Socrates' teacher, without her being here with us. Or people of the future. I can be in dialogue with people who are not here yet because uh, my message, I think that maybe my message may be relevant to them. So it is always a form of dialogue, especially philosophy. Now, going back to the sources. So your references are not necessarily someone that you agree with. And I want to bring the example of family. Not everyone in our family are people that we agree with. And still, we talk with them, we share the same meal, we love them. So your references do not need to be someone, something that you agree with. That's a possibility. Another possibility is someone that you highly disagree with. And it is one of your references because you are going to be debating with that specific quote, with that specific reference and with that specific author. Now, I want to talk about something fundamental in writing an academic paper especially. I would say uh, mostly academic papers. Outside of academia, quotes are uh, used in a very different way. But quotes are really, really important in academia. So first, we, first thing that you want to remember is that in any paper that is short enough, like 2,500, but even in books, you never want a super long quote. The exception is if you're writing, for instance, your PhD dissertation about a specific author. And then you may have, in those cases, which I would say probably is one of the only exceptions, very long quotes from an author. In general, you do not want to do that. You don't want to have a page with, you know, like 20 lines of, uh, of a quote. Why not? Because if you do that, the message is, don't read me, read that author. If you have too much of a long quote, first of all, people are not going to read it. But the message is, give it, give, you know, close my paper up immediately and read this other book. You don't want to lose your audience. You have something important to say. That's why you're writing your papers. So if you are, you know, if, you, if there is something important in the quote, go to the core, go to the cream. Really make sure to highlight only the part of the quote that is necessary. And get rid of everything else that you do not need from the quote. A good quote is a clear quote, is a quote that is not asking people time that is not necessary. People are busy. A lot of people, if you start with lengthy, no, le lengthy quotes, they are just going to you know, quit reading right there and do something else. So a quote is a gift. Let me explain what I mean by this. So first of all, as we said, a quote should never be too, too, too long, with the exception of dissertation about a specific author. Another thing that is very important about quoting is that you want to double check the quote always. Go to the text. Never use a secondary text. For instance, if you write one book where someone is, is quoted, do not, use the do not use the quote. You need to go to the original quoting and the original text to quote. Why is that? Because sometimes there are errors. It happened to me. I was like, oh, this is a great, great quote. And then I, I went to check to the original text following the page number that was in the secondary text, and the quote wasn't there. So you really want to make sure that you are not using other people's quotes. You may use the, 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 the thread, OK, this is a good quote. I also want to quote it. Always double check. Always go to fir the first primary uh, from, from the source. Always go back to the source. Make sure that you have the page right and make sure that the quote is right. And the third thing that I want to say about quotes is this. I've been teaching now for 10 years in uh, academia at NYU. I've been reading literally thousands of papers. 
And something that uh, is very clear at this point of my life is that a lot of students do not know how to quote. I would think probably because in high school we don't quote as much. Now, uh, quoting is specifically an academic uh, art and a craft. So if you are living in academia, you may not need to understand much about quoting. Uh, but still, if you are deciding to stay within the academic field and if you have to write a paper for academia, you have to know how to quote. First of all, keep in mind that the quote is a gift. You heard it right, it's a gift. Why is that? Because you took the time to read either a book or a paper or a poem or whatever, and the, something that really resonated with you, something very important you want to share with your, your own audience. So you, you did a lot of background work for them, first of all. Now, let's treat it as a gift. I like very much this metaphor of a gift because I want you to think of this scenario. Let's play a, a, a thought game. So you are, um, you are having a birthday party. It's your birthday. And you have a lot of friends coming to see you. And they start coming, and this good friend of yours has a gift. They come, they don't say anything. They just give you a gift. They don't say anything, and just leave. And when I ask this question to my student, how would you feel about that? All of them, 100%, say, I wouldn't feel good. I would, you know, I want to hear something. I would like to hear their voice. Uh, just give it a gift and leave. I would not feel good. That's the same if you're writing, and all of a sudden, boom, you throw a quote without introducing the quote. This has happened so often. Without no introduction, boom, there is a quote. And then what would happen if at this birthday party, the other scenario? Now someone comes to you with a gift. You are the birthday person. You take the gift and you don't say absolutely anything. You just leave with the gift. How would they feel? If, how would you feel if you bring a gift to someone? They just take the gift, they don't say anything, they don't smile, they don't say it, and they just leave. And when I ask this question to my students, 100% say, I wouldn't feel good. I would like to hear something from this person. It wouldn't feel very polite that they just take something and they don't say anything, they don't acknowledge anything, they just leave. So this is also happening so often in academic papers. And actually, in not only, on not only undergraduate, but also graduate, mm, also graduate students do this, especially with the conclusion. So they, they, they write a quote, but they, didn't, they don't explain after why the quote is there. So they don't introduce the quote, and they don't, once, once they have the quote, they don't explain why the quote is there. They don't give some meaning. It's like, you know, someone give you a, a gift, and you say thank you, or you say something, and they just go to the next topic. So very, very important. If you are quoting, and actually you have to quote when you are writing an academic paper, it's very important. So when you are quoting, Always keep in mind to treat this quote as a gift. Three foundational guidelines. First of all, never too long of a quote. Second one, always introduce your quote. And third one, always comment after having placed the quote, why is the quote there? Why is it meaningful to your paper? Don't just jump to the next topic. Last but not least, in my case, this, don't take this as, a, as any kind of rule, but for my students, I want for at least, for each, each page, at least two quotes. With the exception of the first page, there should be the introduction, and the last page, that is the conclusion. And, and with the exception that if you're writing about a personal story that, that really brings relevance to our paper, that relevant story that is about your, your personal experience, you might not need any quotes. But apart from these three exceptions, introduction, conclusions, and personal stories, uh, they can be metaphorical, wider meanings. That's why you would have something personal to share and always only share what you're ready to share. But with the quotes have, at least in my case, no less than two and no more than three for each page. Not too many quotes are too much. And no quotes is not enough for you to really understand how the quotes work. The, work. the quotes work there for you to really enrich your paper and really connect your paper to this big flow of the river of space time where all these great minds have been sharing their insights. You are part of us, you are part of them, we're all in this together, and I can wait 
to read your incredible papers. Thank you so much, everyone. And we are going from here to the next topic, which is the architectures of your fabulous papers. So what is that should go where? Thank you so much and enjoy your writing journey.